Okay, so let's see if your algebra skills are strong enough to solve this problem. Now, even a lot of people that are pretty good in algebra are going to find this problem difficult. But uh, it's critical that you know how to solve these type of problems, not only in algebra, but in science as well. All right, so what is the actual problem here? Well, we have an equation, or maybe this could be like a formula, but the thing about it is, is that we have an equation with different variables. So we have N, L, A, and D. And what we want to do here is solve for L. In other words, we want to solve this equation in terms of L. So L is equal to what? All right, so this is the problem. Feel free to use your calculator. But if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you want a nice, easy to understand way to learn math, well, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, here is the problem. So we have this equation, or maybe it's some sort of formula, who knows, but we want to solve for L. All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer is something like this. So we have L is equal to A plus D times N minus one. Now it's possible that you have something very similar to this, and uh, I would accept your answer as the correct answer, but you should have something pretty close to this right here. All right, now, if you got this right, that is very impressive. Matter of fact, you're gonna get a happy face and an A++. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would just say, take the rest of the year off. I have no idea how you're so good at math. You're probably watching that guy on YouTube. But if you're like, hey, Mr. D2 Math Man, uh, I am totally lost, can you help me out? Well, I definitely can. So let's go and get into it right now. All right, so here is the problem. So we have an equation. Now, this is an equation, but it could be like a science formula as well. But what we want to do here is rewrite this equation or formula maybe in terms of L. We want to solve this multivariable equation uh, uh, for this one specific variable, right? So this is the specified variable L. So L is equal to what? Well, before we take on this equation, you got to already know how to solve other types of equations in algebra. So for example, if you can't solve something like this, I'm just kind of making something up here. Well, you're going to have a tough time solving this equation. So the first starting point here is that you already know how to solve various type of equations in algebra. So we're talking about linear equations, systems of equations, rational equations, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm going to be covering a lot of algebra, you know, um, as we get into the solution. So if you get lost with anything, just make a mental note. I'll give you some suggestions on how you can improve. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the problem right now. Again, we want to solve for L. But before we take on this big problem, let's kind of do a simpler version of uh, this situation or these type of problems. So here is a uh, an equation, right? But this happens to be a physics formula. So F is equal to M times A. Well, this means force is equal to mass times acceleration in physics. So let's suppose we wanted to uh, express this formula in terms of acceleration. So acceleration is equal to what in terms of mass and force? Well, that means we want to solve this equation for A. All right, now I'm going to give you a strategy here to solve these type of problems. And this has uh, really worked well over the uh, several decades I have uh, taught math. So uh, for those of you out, um, out there that actually already know how to do these type of problems, well, just stick with, you know, the way you already know how to solve these, um, you know, equations and formulas. But if you're like, hey, Mr. T2 Math Man, I'm totally lost. Well, I'm going to give you a little technique here that can help you out. All right, so you got to pay attention because this can be confusing. All right, so here is our problem. F is equal to M times A, and we want to solve for A. All right, so this is the objective. So what we want to do here is think of the variable that we want to solve for as a variable, right? So in other words, we want to think of F and M as numbers. Now they are variables, but conceptually think of them as numbers. So for example, let's just kind of in our minds, 
replace this F with a number. We'll use the easy number like 10. And then this, uh, this M right here, let's replace it with a number like 5. So let's kind of see what, what are the steps to solve this equation. All right, so 10 is equal to 5 times A. Well, this is a simple algebra equation. All we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 5, right? So whatever is in front of the A, we're going to divide both sides of the equation of that. So A is equal to 10 over 5. So these are the steps to solve for A. So that's what we want to do. We want to kind of look at this and think of these other variables as numbers and then look at the steps and these are the same steps that we're going to follow over here. All right, so F is equal to M times A. Again, uh, we're going to think of A as the variable, right? So in terms of uh, F and M, these are variables, but in our mind, we're going to think of them uh, as numbers. We're going to treat them as numbers. So if you have to, you know, just kind of like stop and maybe make an example problem you know, replace these variables and just say, okay, what would I do here? Oh, I would take whatever's in front of the A and divide both sides of the equation by it. So in this case, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by M. So A is equal to F over M or uh, acceleration is equal to force over mass. Okay, so if you understand this, well, then in essence, uh, you'll understand how to solve this problem. But the algebra is going to get very interesting. All right, now I'm gonna be covering a lot of algebra, so I'm gonna not try to make this video too long. So if you don't understand anything, just pause the video, take a mental note. So again, here, we're gonna solve for L. Okay, so that means we're gonna treat N, A, and D as numbers. So effectively, here is our problem. So if you wanna just, you know, kind of do a quick example, you could be like, all right, let me see here. I'm gonna replace this N with just some sort of number this A with a number and this D with a, a number, making them easy numbers. So think about this problem right here. All right, so just kind of mentally go through how would you solve for L? All right, so you, you might be saying, well, I gotta take, uh, do this step, this step, and this step, and this step. Well, whatever steps you, uh, you would take to solve this are the same steps to solve for L in this situation right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the actual solution right now. So the first thing that I'm going to do is put parentheses around this difference right here okay this is a really really important tip so in algebra anytime you have a sum or a difference in other words when you um, are adding or subtracting uh, terms that involve variables or numbers always put parentheses around those things if they're not already there right so right here l minus a i'm just going to group these together that's really going to help avoid making some very common mistakes. So just kind of trust me on this. This is a great tip. So again, I'm noticing I have a difference here. So I'm gonna put in some parentheses right off the bat. Okay, so now what do we need to do? Well, I have a fraction, okay? And then I have this number. So this is a fraction. Uh, technically, it's a rational e expression, but uh, that's not important. But basically what we need to do is add these two things right here. All right, so how do we add fractions? Well, here I have L minus A over D plus one, but I can think of this one as one over one. So here I have a fraction. Well, to add these two together, I need a lowest common denominator and that would be D, right? So I can multiply this one times a D and this numerator times a D. So D divided by D, of course, is one, but now I would have D over D and I would have the same denominator, okay? That means I can add the numerator and the numerators, excuse me. So that would be L minus A plus D over D, right? So this is the correct answer right there. Now I'm going to show you another technique here. And I know I just can't help myself as a math teacher. I'm like, you got to look at this situation because this is a great shortcut. And if you don't know this, well, you're going to find out a great little math shortcut right now. All right, let's take a look at this problem. One third plus two fifths. Now, most people would find the LCD, which of course is 15, but you can uh, use a shortcut. I have a ton of videos uh, on this little shortcut on my YouTube channel. So I call it the bow tie method. We can add these fractions by following this pattern. All right, you're gonna start with this denominator to the bottom right. You gotta do it in this exact order. So five times one is what? So we're gonna multiply across this way. This is gonna, basically the pattern's gonna look like this. We're gonna do a multiplication this way, then we're gonna do multiplication this way, and then we're gonna do multiplication this way. And it's gotta be in this order. In other words, this is one, 
two, and then this last step is three. Okay, so five times one is what? That's five. So we're taking this denominator, multiplying by that numerator. Now, because we're adding, we're going to put a plus sign here. We're adding these two fractions. So then we have three times two is what? That's six. This forms our numerator. Then our last step is three times five is 15. So our answer, that's a terrible 15. I could do better than that. So uh, our answer is what? Well, it's 11 over 15, and that's what you that's what uh, you would get if you multiplied and got the LCD, multiplied this by five, this by three, and went through all that work. Or you could just use a simple method. Now I mention this uh, because we can use this method right here to uh, simplify this fraction. So one times L minus A is L minus A, and then D times one is D over D times one is D. Okay, so here is where we're at, and uh, now things are going to get um, more interesting. All right, now, if you're like, hey, Mr. D2 Math Man, I'm very confused. Well, don't feel bad because a lot of people, you know, get confused with these type of problems. you got to practice this stuff. But let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I'm pretty much into uh, this problem, so I'm not going to be too long, but just know that I am trying to reach as many people as possible on YouTube, right? So as a math teacher, when I make some content that I know can help uh, people, I want to really help as many people as I possibly can. And the only way I can do that is to get your support, right? And the best way to support this channel is to actually hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. My channel is all about trying to make math clear and understanding and interesting. Now, if you need uh, more help in you know, what we're talking about here, check out my full main math courses, and uh, you probably want to check out like my Algebra 1 course or my Math Skills Rebuilder course, right? So if you need to learn how to solve equations and these type of equations, these are some, uh, two good options for you. Also, I have a ton of content on YouTube. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on because we have a lot more work to do. All right, so what do we have now? Well, here we are. Again, uh, we kind of have to keep our eye on the prize, and that is this L. We want L is equal to, but I got L, you know, as part of this numerator right here. But what we want to notice is that we have a fraction, okay? So this is actually one big numerator, and this is a denominator. So I have a fraction over here. Matter of fact, let me show you like this. So I have N is equal to, now this is a numerator, and this is a denominator. So this is really the situation. But if I can think of n as a uh, fraction, like n over 1, what I have is one fraction equaling to another fraction. And that's pretty cool. Let me show you an example here. So if I have a fraction like 1 half, and that's equal to another fraction that has, that has the same value as 1 half, maybe like 5 over 10, this is called a proportion in mathematics. Now, the cool thing about these situations is that the cross products are equal. So 10 times 1 is 10, and that's equal to 2 times 5, which, of course, is 10. Now, the cross product is awesome, or uh, a proportion situation is awesome, because if you're trying to solve an equation where you have a variable, okay, that's part of a numerator or a denominator, well, you can use the cross product to solve these type of equations. So you got to kind of, you know, be on the lookout for this situation, and we actually have this right here. All right, so I'm going to put this as n over 1, and then I'm going to use a cross product to uh, clear these fractions. That's basically what I want to do here. So I have n over 1 is equal to parentheses l minus a plus d over d. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply d times n is nd, and then 1 times all of this is simply all of that, which is l minus a plus d. Okay, so we have the fractions cleared away, and we are getting closer. Now, because I want to solve for L, I want L is equal to, I want this variable on the left-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up all of this stuff that's on the right, and I'm going to move it to the left-hand side of the equation, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to move it to the other side of the equation. You're totally um, allowed to do that in algebra. In other words, X is equal to 3, and 3 is equal to X. It's perfectly fine. The left is equal to the right. The right is equal to the left. But in algebra, we like to have our variables to the left. In other words, we don't like to solve equations like 2x is equal to 10 or 10 is equal to 2x. We don't typically like to have our variables on the right-hand side. We like to put them on the left-hand side. So in this case, uh, I'm going to get that L 
uh, moved over to the left right now. Okay, so hopefully you understand this step and don't be shy, you know, in terms of uh, doing this. Okay, I have my L on the left hand side. So what do I need to do now? Well, we are getting pretty close to solving uh, this equation. All right, so here I have L. So now at this point, I can drop these parentheses. These are grouping symbols. I can drop them anytime. But now I have L minus A plus D is equal to ND. All right, so I want to get L by itself. So let's just put L by itself on one side of the equation, and I can get rid of or I can move um, A and D to the other side. So in other words, how do I get rid of this D? All I have to do is subtract D from both sides of the equation. And how do I get rid of this A? All I have to do is add A to both sides of the equation. So what is that going to look like? Well, it's going to be L is equal to ND, right? So we have to keep this first. So we can have minus D, right? And we're going to subtract D from both sides of the equation. And then we'll add A as well. Okay, so that gives us L is equal to ND minus D plus A. All right, so if you had this answer, I would actually give you full credit for it. So that is fantastic. But uh, really what we can do here is simplify a little bit further because we have D here and D uh, in this term as well. So we can factor out a D as a uh, common factor. So we can write this uh, part of the formula as D parentheses N minus one. So uh, D times N, of course, is ND or DN, and then D times one is D plus A. All right, so this is uh, fine as well as an answer, or we can write it this way. We can have L is equal to A plus D parentheses L minus one. All right, so I would take this, this, or this as the, uh, the correct answer. So if you, you know, had something maybe, uh, maybe up here, along these lines, well, you're on the right track. But this particular problem, I would say, is a medium level problem in terms of difficulty. But uh, overall, in terms of algebra, a lot of students uh, struggle with this. You've got to practice. And if you found this a little bit difficult, well, you are not alone. All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.